Yeah, it was a fancy little pan down right there, huh? Well, we're right now in uh, Nolita. We're in North Little Italy, and we'll be taking a tour of Little Italy today, and we're starting here at Old St. Patrick's Cathedral. So let's go for a little walk. Mom! Now, Old St. Patrick's Cathedral uh, is actually the first cathedral in New York. It was before the new St. Patrick's Cathedral, which is up in Midtown. This was built in 1810, actually, one of the architects of City Hall, uh, Jean-Francois Mangin actually built this. Um, actually, this wall right here behind me was built there afterwards because they, the, uh, the Catholics, the Irish especially, who came to church here underwent so much persecution. People throw bottles and like harass them after church. So they built that. Anyways, we're walking down Mulberry. This is going to take us into Little Italy. But like I said before, we're in North Little Italy. No Lita. They gave it this fancy little name to make it more exclusive like they do here in New York. And all this is a part of Soho, south of Houston. Same thing. And Tribeca is another example, Triangle below Canal. All these neighborhoods are very expensive today. I also used to live here. I lived two blocks from here when I first moved to New York, but I wasn't living the high life, so chill out. I was living in an apartment with seven roommates. $1,100 a month, no windows in my apartment. I didn't know where else to go, so that's where I ended up living. Two months, we got kicked out because it was illegal. Go figure. Anyways, we're walking south on Mulberry. On the right is 247 Mulberry, and this building, with the little shoe store there, used to be the Ravenite Social Club. It was like an Italian club, and it was where the heads of the Gambino crime family, one of the five families here in New York, five mafia families, and famously headed by John Gotti. And this is where John Gotti was actually arrested. They wiretapped the apartment upstairs where he used to do a lot of business, and they ended up arresting him. This used to be, like I said, all this stuff used to be Little Italy, but Little Italy has shrunk a lot. To give you guys some of the history of it, the first Italian immigrants really started coming here in like the 1860s and 70s because people forget that Italy wasn't even a united country until the year 1870. It was all different kind of regions uh, and then they unified and it, with it came lots of growing pains. The, the state wasn't unified, there were money problems, so a lot of people came here to make money. Um, in fact, a lot of Italians came over here to basically work for a season and then go back or send their money back. They called them birds of season. And when they'd return, they were called the ritornati. You gotta do this with your hand, that makes it Italian. I think they came over here and they started to kind of gravitate towards this cheaper area of the city which was located in what used to be kind of the five points if you've ever heard of the movie gangs of new york that was the five points but now it's really like i said fancy neighbor you can see people waiting in line to get into these like boutique shops and sample sales so they settled in that area and they, they kind of helped each other find jobs find places to live they spoke the languages look at the peak New York City had about like 400 to 450,000 Italians by like 1920, 1930. To give you an idea, that's like the population of Tampa, Florida, which is where I'm from. There were so many Italians in Little Italy that different parts of uh, Little Italy represented different parts of Italy. So if you were from Naples, you lived and worked on Mulberry. If you were from Northern Italy, you lived and worked on Bleecker Street. If you were from uh, Sicily, you lived and worked on Elizabeth Street. Also too, speaking of which, we're walking by the Spring Lounge which is a bar that's been here since Prohibition, actually. It used to be a to-go bar. You could buy buckets of beer here. So now we're walking south. Let me get stop here for a second. Also, to another thing on Elizabeth Street back there is where uh, Martin Scorsese grew up, famous uh, Sicilian descendant. So we're walking south. We're gonna be getting to uh, Kenmare here very soon. So another thing to keep in mind too is that the reason Little Italy has shrunk so much is because there are no more Italians coming here. There haven't been. What you have now is uh, Italian Americans. Because what happened is you had all these immigrants coming in and then their descendants are born in the United States. They're born speaking English. They're born knowing the culture. So they don't need Little Italy as much anymore. In fact, they actually don't want to be there. They want to get away from their parents and become part of the country, become like everyone else. It's kind of the assimilation, the Americanization process. So really, if you think about it, the American dream really is for Little Italy to eventually disappear. That's kind of what most immigrants want. They don't want to be thought of as other and persecuted and discriminated against. So what you have in Little Italy, this shrunken down uh, neighborhood, is kind of the goal of immigrant groups. So what's interesting is that today, while you don't have a little Italy, we do have a Staten Island in New York, and Staten Island is the largest concentration of Italian Americans in the United States. Yeah, I know some stuff. So we're walking here south, we just walked by Kenmare, which was a street named Kenmare, Irish, you know, Irish. In here, 
at Broom is going to be the entrance to what is really the Little Italy area. But like I said, that's one of the cool things about New York is you have all these immigrant groups, but they all eventually kind of become part of, you know, of the bigger country. Here in New York, you can, it's so you touch a young city, you can trace its entire history by the immigrant groups that were coming here at any given point. At the beginning of New York's history, it was the Dutch and the English. Uh, then, you know, mid-1800s was the Irish, Germans, end of the 1800s, the Italians, Russians, Jews. Today, it's the Chinese and the Mexicans. So there's like lots of little groups that come here, make their home here. But here you can see the sign, we're entering Little Italy now. This is Mulberry and Broom. You can start seeing some of the restaurants here that have been here ever since. Been here since it was Little Italy, but uh, like I said, they're not catering to Italians anymore. They're catering to tourists pretty much. So people say it's kind of Disney World-ish, but it's still very important because this serves as a symbol. It serves as a focal point. People come back here for the feasts and, and celebrations that they still have. Like for example, uh, every September, they do the Feast of San Gennaro, which is a patron saint of Naples, Italy. Uh, and remember, we're on Mulberry. This is where the, the Napolese uh, lived and worked. In fact, they still do that, that same feast in Naples, Italy. San Gennaro was a, a, a saint who lived in the 300s. And the, the, the legend is, or the, the story is, that he, he, he clung to Catholicism. The Romans, you know, threw him in a furnace, as they do. He didn't die, though. He miraculously survived, so they cut his head off. Go figure, that's what happens. So if you ever survive a furnace burning, you're going to get your head cut off. But that's where San Gennaro comes from, so they still celebrate that today. Mortalizing the, uh, the Godfather movies. It was a murder at the San Gennaro Festival. Also, too, you have a lot of, like, we just passed by Grotta Azura. Grotta Azura, sorry. That's um, basically like a blue grotto, the island of Capri outside of Naples. That's what it's called, so it's called that. And that's actually one of Frank Sinatra's favorite restaurants. A lot of times the Rat Pack would hang out there. It's a cold day today, by the way. Sorry if I sniffle. But just start seeing people here. And one of the perks of doing this right now, as opposed to the summer when it's nicer out, less tourists. A lot of tourists in this neighborhood normally. There's a, it's not as busy this time of year in New York. But you start seeing some more of the uh, restaurants that have been here s since back in the day. You have Pamonti, the ravioli company, well, the ravioli pasta. And they sell pasta to the restaurants and, you know, you have Oliva, which has been there since 1892. Family owned until very recently, actually. You know who used to be one of the owners uh, was Tony Danza. Who's the boss? Who's the boss of Oliva? Tony Danza. Well, he used to be, he's not anymore. And then you have Ferrara, which was opened uh, as a uh, coffee shop, pastries. Enrico Caruso used to be a big fan of Ferrara. He was a, an opera singer from Italy. Died at 48, yet he played the Metropolitan Opera House 863 times. Pretty accomplished. That was Ferrara. You have De Paolo's down there. De Paolo's is another, uh, been there since I believe like the 1920s. Oh, we can cross. Yeah, the, that's cool. John Gimino gun, gun Shop. They say it's the oldest gun shop in uh, the United States, 1911. They used to sell guns to the police station, which was used to be located right there, 240 Center Street. Very fancy building. It's not there anymore. Now that, now that same building is condos. In fact, like Cindy Crawford, Calvin Klein, those are some of the people who live there. Continue to walk down to Little Italy here. See Christmas in New York. It's a store that sells Christmas stuff all year. Look at this dog on the ground. <laughs> it's cute. Anyways, we're walking through here. So there are multiple areas too that are Italian in New York. This was kind of the original Little Italy, but they, there's still Arthur Avenue in the Bronx, which is uh, you know up, at, up, up near Fordham University. It's where a lot of like the Italians who kind of graduated out of this Little Italy went to. There's Umberto's Clam House to the left. That was the new location. Original Umberto's Clam House was right here at De Janeiro, where De Janeiro is. It used to be here on the corner. Very famous mafia murder happened here. 1972, uh, Joey Gallo was having scongili here with his uh, family, uh, celebrating his 43rd birthday after going to see Don Rickles at the Copacabana. And uh, he was just hanging out here, and they gunned him down. He. Uh, he was a big rival of the Colombo crime family. So they say he came and killed him. There was a Colombo associate at the bar when they walked in, saw him, left, got all of his buddies, 
and uh, came in and started gunning him down. He came out here to this corner and actually died out here. They say he stumbled out here to get the gunfire away from his, from his family. Don Rickles almost came with him that day. He was invited. And he was at the uh, performance with Jerry Orbach, famous Jerry Orbach. The actor went with him to, to see Don Rickles. So anyways, what happens in this neighborhood is that a lot of the Italians have moved away. And it's kind of sad. You know, you don't have as much of a little Italy today anymore. But what's interesting is that is kind of the Americanization process. Like I said before, this is the eventual goal. It's for people to, you know, kind of move, be able to move and, and become part of the country around it. And back then they were very persecuted. Today, Italians are a huge part of New York City and a huge part of the United States. In fact, the mayor is a descendant of Italians. Our governor is the descendant of Italians. A lot of Italian influence here in New York. It's just not all located in one place. Uh, so yeah, you have a lot of people that, you know, you never know, they're just descendants of these immigrants. Italians actually were the biggest represented group going through Ellis Island, which was, which was huge in the 19, early 1900s. I'm actually a, a descendant of immigrants. My parents are born and raised uh, Nicaraguans. Así es, yo soy nicaragüense, hablo español fluidamente, muchas gracias. Yeah, that's right, I speak Mexican. But uh, yeah, we're walking now down towards Canal, which marks the end of Little Italy and kind of the beginning of Chinatown. Canal Street named after a canal that was put there. Ah, oh, there was a canal there, late 1700s. You'll see that here in a second. We just walked by Monero's Pizza. It's a brand new pizza by the Slice Place here in Little Italy. They didn't have one before, believe it or not. But it's named after uh, Tony Monero. You guys know who he is? From the movie uh, Saturday Night Fever. You guys know that movie? It's a good movie. But we are here now at the end of Little Italy. That was it. It's a pretty, pretty quick walk. You can see down there, it's about three blocks. It's all that really comprises Little Italy. But it's still very important. Uh, like I said, it, remind, it serves as a reminder of the history of the Americanization process, the immigration process here in the United States. Uh, so even though it's not as Italian as it used to be, it's still very important. So, so don't make fun of it. Thanks. Oh yeah, and don't forget to like, uh, you know, subscribe and follow me and stuff. It's very important. Self-promotion, baby. Mm.